is the latest in a spate of recent incidents where security personnel failed to detect impending danger, also causing concern now, is how those tasked with managing the country's security communicate information on security-related threats. Ben Kitili digs out a trend that shows dangerous fault lines in security reporting lines. From the preliminary investigations, we can rule out a grenade or a bomb attack. Most probably, it's an electric fault. This was the initial response by then Police Chief Matthew Itere following the terrorist attack on Arsenal House along Moy Avenue in Nairobi that left 33 people injured, 16 of them critically. However, after the Kenya Power Company vehemently denied the reports, the police later confirmed that the blast had indeed been caused by a bomb. But it appears that the changes to the helm of the country's security operators did not include its system of public communication, and its effect was not long in coming. It was during the Westgate siege in September last year, and in the wake of the largest terrorist attack in Kenya since the bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi in August 1998, Kenyans struggled to access an information in what was in effect a blurry operation. When Interior Secretary Joseph Olelenko addressed a press briefing, his remarks baffled the nation. The smoke you are seeing from the building is as a result of the terrorists putting, uh, setting some mattress on fire to distract our action. And barely a week ago, Bungoma Senator Moses Wetangula Skar was allegedly shot at in Nairobi. The police immediately responded, saying that the senator's car had in fact been hit by an erratic advertisement billboard. And the latest police spin that is still causing ripples among Kenyans, the explosion of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Inspector General of Police David Kimayo explained to skeptic Kenyans that the said explosion was indeed caused by an electric bulb that fell into a dustbin. So was that a poorly worked out spin by the police or purely taking Kenyans for a ride? I think the government is hiding some things. Former counter-terrorism field agent Mbiju Mwenda faults the police service for what he calls a police coup that could cost Kenya on the security front. I wish the IG was not the one who made that statement. I wish it came from the police spokeswoman. And then the IG would come later and recant that statement. It's not time to take us for granted and tell us and tell us lies. It's time to say the truth. The clear lack of coordination across the police hierarchy in Bijiwa says is something that can be avoided. He had no more guts to say yes, I still stand on that. He said we're investigating. That's what he should have said at the beginning. It later turned out that a bomb had been smuggled inside the region's premier airport and an inevitable negative effect on JKIA. What the terrorists achieved was causing a downgrading of our, air, of our airport, which has a direct effect on our economy. And if you remember what Al-Shabaab has vowed to do is to, to, to cripple our economy. In the recent past, Kenya has been a soft target for terrorists. And questions over the leadership in the police service may not be helping the fight on terror. Ben Ketili, KTN.